Thank well, you. Bloomberg contributing editor Bill Cohen has been with me for the hour. We've been talking about the culture of Wall Street. Has it changed since the days of the buildup to the financial crisis? My guest as well is Todd Harrison now, the founder and CEO of Minionville Media, one of the nation's leading financial blogs. He's also the author of the new book. We have a lot of authors on today, The Other Side of Wall Street. Todd, thanks a lot for coming Thank in for having me. to talk to us. So, I mean, and this is a question we've, that's sort of been running through the hour. Have things fundamentally changed? Has the culture really learned its lesson? Well, I, I think social mood has changed, and certainly the social mood surrounding financial institutions. But the financial institutions themselves, they, they had to change, and the writing's been on the wall for some time. Uh, the broker-dealer uh, functionality used to be, uh, how quickly can I get a, a fill on my order of facilitation role? And then over time, they, they wrap the addendums, whether it's IPOs or research around that functionality. Uh, but the confluence of Reg FD and technology uh, at the beginning of, of the decade really changed all that. And I think the writing was on the wall. So it was a matter of time. Then you add in all the off-board derivatives and all that other fun stuff. And, and then you have this, uh, this us versus them mentality that's kind of wrapping around the world right now. Well, first, congratulations on your book, which I've had a chance to read, and it's a great book, by the way. Everyone should uh, <laughs> pick it up, because it's an amazing story about Todd's growing up and how he overcame a lot of uh, difficulties. But uh, where do you think hedge funds are? How do they deal with the new reality now? A lot of hedge funds have gone out of business. Uh, a lot of people are more skeptical of mm -hmm. hedge funds and that kind of risk-taking than they were before. Is there a new reality for hedge funds, yeah, well, even though I, they I, weren't I, implicated I, in any of the, the problems? I, I think there are. I, I think there is, and, and they're going to have to adapt. Uh, one of the things that, that I think that was kind of sweeping through the social mood shift was that hedge funds were widely perceived to be an acceptable casualty of war, whether it was from Washington or from Main Street, Wall Street, and the hedge funds, they were bad guys, and they were painted with that blame brush. And, you know, in some cases, I'm sure it's warranted. In many cases, however, it's not. But I think structurally, the, co the compensatory structure for hedge funds is going to have to change. Uh, the traditional one in 20, I think, is going to morph. I think you're going to see longer lockup periods. Uh, I think that funds are going to start to reward investors that have, that have stayed with them over time and reduce that management fee. Uh, so I think that, as with most things, it's going to, you're going to see an adaptation. And there's going to be uh, uh, beneficiaries that come out of this. I, I've always said that the leaders that come out of the crisis will not be the same as the leaders that enter the crisis. And I think that's, that's true across a lot of industries. And I think it's true across the hedge fund spectrum as well. Well, and some of the firms have already started to change the fee structures, the one in 20 fee structures. Structure. I mean, do you think it's going to be impossible for anybody to hold on to that, especially when a lot of these guys are having trouble even matching the performance of the stock market, let alone exceeding it? Well, there's a lot of moving parts right now. And I would argue, uh, not that it would really matter in terms of this discussion, but I would argue that the markets aren't free right now. There's a lot of synthetic uh, influences in the market right now. And that's putting the gun to a lot of hedge fund managers' uh, head, uh, specifically into quarter end, uh, which we're seeing, I think, in the price action this week. Uh, but they're going to have to adapt. Uh, the, the cream will rise to the top, and there's going to be an alternative asset class, I think, uh, that continues forward. I'm pretty sure as long as you can make the case, and this goes into an entirely different discussion, that capitalism in and of itself as the way that we've come to understand it will continue uh, in its current iteration or at least uh, the pre-crisis iteration. Let me, let me pro. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a big subject. Yeah, this is yeah. a big subject. Well, what, what I struck by what you said there that you didn't think the markets were free at the moment. I mean, there were influences on the market. What, what, what did you mean by that? Well, you know, once upon a time, there was fundamentals, there was technicals, there was structural, there was psychology. And you could actually look at the market through the lens of those being the four pillars. And at any given time, that would help you define uh, your risk in the marketplace. But now with, with the government, uh, the heavy hand of the government, the intervention, I think it's really hard to dictate, you know, how strong this recovery is versus uh, the stock market rally and what that looks like uh, until you see the market stand on its own two feet. I want, we were just touching on this issue before the break about how you're getting this, what you say is artificial support mm -hmm. of the market and perhaps of the, the broader economy. So what happens? I mean, does the, does the Fed say, okay, we're done with QE2, no QE3, and things fall off a cliff? I, well, it's, it's, there's no, I think there's no simple solutions, and I think that's one of the reasons that this has been drawn out the way it has. Um, I like to look at the analogy or use the analogy of Pulp Fiction when they slam the adrenaline needle in the heart of the patient. You know, that patient does not get up and turn around and run a marathon. Ultimately, you need to rest and get on, on your own, on your own uh, two feet to stand uh, uh, structurally. Uh, but, but ultimately, I think that 
that it's going to be very difficult to ascertain how, how strong the market is as long as you have uh, these crutches. And, uh, and I think that there's two things that we're seeing right now. There's, uh, there's drugs that mask the symptoms, which is I, I think we've seen steady doses since the crisis. And then there's medicine that cures the disease. I think that medicine is debt destruction or reorganization. And I think that's actually going to play out overseas first. Uh, I think you're seeing some of that wrangling in terms of who's going to share the burden and the bondholders. And when that capital market structure begins to shift in, in, in the fixed income arena, I think that's where we're going to get a real gut, uh, gut check in terms of what it means for equities. So is it just a matter of time before the U.S. catches the European sovereign debt contagion? I mean, are we worthy of our AAA rating anymore? Or? I think we, in all due respect, I, th I think we have. I mean, you know, as long as that we, we have to rely on this tr these trillions of dollars coming in to support the system, I, I think you're hard-pressed to say that we've recovered. You know, th these things take time and they take price and they take uh, a cleansing. And uh, I, I don't think that what we've experienced is really going to change the, the, the behavior that, that caused the crisis in the first place. I think that there needs to be this, uh, this further cleansing uh, at every level, both uh, corporate and, and, and on the consumer level. But I will say that the corporate bond market acts great. And through that lens, it's telling you that the equity markets have some time before that comeuppance comes, comes through. I was going to say, so I mean, what are you going to do with your money? I mean, I guess you can ride the equity wave for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But you know, if equities are a risk, treasuries, you're obviously I mean, what you, there's nothing yeah, you yeah, can do yeah, there. Yeah. It's the not really, it's a price. false choice. Yeah. So, so what do you do? Uh, you know, that's a great question. I think the answer is dependent on where you sit, where you stand. Jeff saw it, a good friend of ours always says where you stand is a function of where you sit. Personally, I've never seen commodities uh, play out as a safe haven uh, in, in the end run. So I don't think that that's the, that's the answer. But I think that ultimately capital preservation will be the first step towards capital uh, being rewarded for your decisions. Todd, thank you so much. Todd Harrison of Vinionville. Bill Cohen, thank you so much for joining us for the hour. You've